Welcome to our tutorial on digital electronics and in this tutorial I'm going to discuss about the edge triggered flip-flops okay so in this section we're going to give you the concept of edge triggering and how it's useful over level triggering as we've seen in our previous tutorials okay so before we move on to the concept of edge triggering I would just like to inform you again or rather as a recapitulation there are two types of level triggered flip-flops namely one is the logic zero level triggered flip-flop and another is the logic one level triggered flip-flop so if we just take here an SR flip-flop for example then here we just let's assume we have a logic one level triggered flip-flop okay so right over here okay so this is the circuit of a logic one level triggered flip-flop and now we know or rather we have known from our previous tutorials that at the clock input we need a logic one signal that would just make the clock active so that with changes in the input could affect the outputs as well so there's no limit as to how much time we can keep the uh, clock on for okay so we can just keep the clock on or rather at logic one signal level for as much longer time as we can wish to but in this case it just gives rise to some problems which is that the outputs okay rather the probability of the outputs changing with respect to sudden unprecedented and sudden changes at the input terminals okay it could cause some detrimental effects on the purpose for which we have used this flip-flop in our circuit so if an application requires that the output state of this flip-flop to remain at let's say the logic zero and logic one levels respectively i'm just you know citing an example over here for which the inputs should remain at logic zero and logic one levels okay for the snr inputs respectively so with the inputs at these levels the outputs should be kept fixed at the logic zero and one levels respectively okay for about let's say one second so let's say an application requires that the output remain in this state for this period of time that is one second so now if there are uh, sudden unprecedented changes in the input due to some unknown cause okay which we may not find out for that time being okay then if the clock input is kept on for a sufficiently long time period then the probability of this output changing would increase and it might happen that before the period of one second is over and the application just ceases okay the outputs might change state and as a result the application would remain incomplete oops that's quite a sorry state of affair so now in order to save your circuit from such malfunction okay from I mean from the uh, probability of the input suddenly changing and affecting your circuit operation it is advisable that you must apply certain short pulses at the enable or the clock inputs okay now these pulses ideally if uh, they be of the order of let's say one second then also this time period is quite large in terms of certain other sophisticated applications of the flip-flops where they might be used in processor based high-end digital applications so in terms of processor speeds and uh, fast switching speeds the time period of one second is also quite large and in circuits that work very fast over there the outputs or rather yeah outputs can suffer sudden unprecedented changes due to sudden in changes in the input also so in order to save your circuit from all such problems it's ideal to use a pulse of a very very narrow pulse width so we require a pulse of very narrow pulse width okay so this sort of pulse having very narrow pulse width is also referred to an edge okay and this sort of pulses are rather generally have uh, you know the on time of the order of few nanoseconds as such so if we are you know trying to uh, look at how the edges can be generated then we must consider the circuit or rather before i just move on to the circuit i would like to, like to say that edges are generated okay if we just consider this as a clock pulse then the edges are generated either at the rising or falling edge of the clock pulse 
So if we just see, look at this clock pulse, it has got two states, logic zero and logic one levels respectively. So the it has, it has got, you know, as you can see here, I'll use a different color in this case, as you can see here, it has got two edges, okay, the transition states. So whenever this clock signal transits from the logic zero to logic one state, that is its ascends from the logic zero to logic one state, it's referred to as the rising edge, okay, of this clock pulse and when it falls from the logic 1 to logic 0 state it's referred to as the falling or trailing edge of the same clock pulse so now these pulses or rather these edges are generated either at the rising or the falling edges of clock pulses so if you are just interested or rather curious about this process so kindly consider this circuit for a moment okay so here we have sorry an AND gate, okay, and there is a NOT gate right over here, okay, so consider terminal C, these are the terminals A and B, and we have the terminal output Y. So if we are just trying, or rather just try and see, look at the output, or rather the truth table of this AND gate for certain various combinations as are possible, okay, so here the output would be nothing more than this. So if we have a clock pulse input at this circuit at terminal C okay we have a clock input right over here so there you go so over here we can see that the clock passes through three stages okay this clock pulse passes through three stages that is one two and three as I've shown over here so whenever the stage one comes okay and we have a logic zero signal at C it quickly travels to the input B faster than that I mean that of A okay it travels faster than uh, the input before traveling at A. So now the input provided at C you know requires some time to reach A okay and B receives the inputs faster. It's because of the time delay introduced by this NOT gate which is of the order of few nanoseconds okay due to this gate propagation delay. So now the, if this output of the NOT gate be referred to as clock bar okay clock bar over here and now with a logic zero signal at the terminal C, B having a logic zero signal, the A after a few nanoseconds goes on to the logic one state. So for all the logic one, logic zero combinations, okay, and both logic zero combinations over here, the AND gate has zero output. And now when the stage two of this clock pulse arrives, okay, sorry, the C moves on to a logic one state right over here, B moves on to the logic one state faster, and we can see here that for few nanoseconds, I mean after few nanoseconds, the signal at A would change from 1 to 0. But for that few nanoseconds equal to the gate propagation delay of this NOT gate, the output that is the signal levels at A and B both remain at logic 1 states. So during this state as we can see here that the AND gate outputs a logic 1 signal. So the AND gate would output a logic 1 signal for that very moment of the order of the same time period that is few nanoseconds as the gate delay. Okay, so now upon the arrival of the uh, you know third stage of the clock pulse when this is zero at the I mean the logic level is zero at terminal C, B is also at logic level zero. By this time few nanoseconds is over and A moves on to the logic zero state. So here although the output at A would be after a few nanoseconds logic one okay but then still then the combination at the not gate in i mean at the end gate input is a zero zero for some time for a few nanoseconds and then one zero so for all these combinations we have a zero output as you can see here but the benefit of this circuit is that for the clock bar signal okay if we just plot it right here in comparison to the clock input then we see here right at the rising edge of this clock signal we have the formation or rather we witness the formation of a very narrow pulse of a few nanoseconds pulse width okay so this sort of pulse i mean this sort of very narrow pulse is referred to as an edge and since it originates in the positive or rather at the rising edge of this clock signal it's known as a positive edge okay so since there are two types of edges in a pulse there could be another type of edge I mean edge signal originating and yes there is for making negative edge signals okay or rather yeah negative edge signals 
we need something or rather a circuit of something like this okay so we have a and b inputs over here this is the output y and if we just take a look at this and gate, it's a quite different type of and gate. it's referred to as an active low and gate all right so if we just take a look at its truth table for the moment okay for the various combinations that are possible okay it will be just the reverse order of what we saw in case of this previous AND gate right over here so if we just you know consider this clock again at the terminal C okay and the output of this NOT gate represents the clock bar okay there we go so this clock signal again has three states as I told you in the previous explanation and upon the falling of the uh, you know stage one we have a logic zero signal here travels quickly to B and this NOT gate also has a nanoseconds time delay and the A changes to logic one state after a few nanoseconds so for all the combinations of zero one as you can see here the output will be a zero when the term I mean the stage two arrives logic one signal at the C terminal B changes to a logic one signal and after a few nanoseconds what happens is that although both the inputs are at one one okay still then the output would be a zero as provided by the truth table of this active low net and gate okay and then when the finally the uh, after few nanoseconds the output I mean the logic level at A changes to zero okay now when the logic level I mean the stage 3 of the input clock signal arrives okay C is at logic level 0 B is at logic level 0 now here we see both the A and B terminals are at logic level 0 for a few nanoseconds before the terminal A changes in its uh, you know signal levels or other input signal level changes at A okay so here we see for both uh, A and B at 0 the output is a logic 1 state okay so the AND gate circuit over here outputs a logic 1 signal pulse okay of a very narrow time period about a few nanoseconds similar to the gate delay of this uh, NOT gate right over here so as we can see over here that if we just you know plot the clock bar signal again side by side then we can see here that there is another pulse or rather another very narrow pulse which can be obviously termed as an edge originating right over here at the falling edge or trailing edge of the clock pulse so this is known as a negative edge okay so depending upon whether it's a negative or a positive edge and if we just use flip-flops to be triggered by this sort of circuit so flip-flops are triggered by edges are known as edge triggered flip-flops okay and those that are triggered by the positive edge their logic diagram is looks like you know something like this if we just take an SR exam I mean SR flip-flop for example so this is the diagram of a positive edge triggered flip-flop okay and on the other hand we have another type of flip-flop okay which just takes trigger on the negative edges okay so there you go we have the negative edge triggered flip-flop okay so there you go so now in this flip-flop we see that there is a arrow mark okay referred to as dynamic triggering which indicates that this flip-flop is an edge triggered flip-flop so it's referred to as dynamic triggering in many of the digital textbooks okay so now if we just take a look at the circuit modifications inside an SR flip-flop that might take place in order to you know convert it from a simple level triggered flip-flop to an edge triggered flip-flop okay it just includes the inclusion of a you know extra hardware over here at the clock input now this hardware is referred to as a pulse transition detector circuit so this pulse transition detector okay takes the clock at its input okay and this flip-flop together with this pulse transition detector over here forms an edge triggered flip-flop okay so there you go we have an edge triggered flip-flop so this pulse transition circuit is basically the circuit that we have discussed right over here and also over here such type of circuits represent 
the pulse transition circuit that you all can see over here. So with that we come to the end of our tutorial on edge triggered flip flops. See you in the next tutorial on digital electronics. Until then it's thank you for now and goodbye.